Throughout the course, we will be using the TelloEDU app as our course companion. This app can be used to control and program the TelloEDU, but also features a built-in simulator with progressively more challenging levels that you may complete. To download the app, you can do so on iOS, Android or Windows 10. To download on Android, search TelloEDU in the Google Play Store and it is the top link here. On iOS, also search TelloEDU and it's this one right here. There will also be a link in the description where you can go directly to the Play Store or the iOS Store respectively. On Windows 10, we will include a link at the bottom in the description where you can download and install the app. To launch the app, simply open it up and select your setting menu here and press launch. When you launch the app, it will bring you to the home page. This is where you can enter all the menus or attempt different planets. First, however, in order to unlock all the planets, we need to log in. If you have not subscribed to our course yet, you will still be able to complete the first planets, but without logging in, you won't be able to progress further than Earth. To log in, we can tap status log down in the top right corner. Make sure at the top we have selected global and then enter your account and password in the respective fields. This is case sensitive, so make sure you have the right capitalization of your password and username. We're entering, log into the app now. Before we get started, you may want to change your avatar. This can be done at the top menu here. Completing a planet with three stars on all levels will unlock new avatars, as you can see here. There are many avatars to unlock and there's a new set with each planet you complete. So feel free to experiment with which avatar you prefer the most. Back on the main menu, on the left hand side at the bottom we have the control menu. This menu can be used to control the physical TelloEDU. If we tap this menu and open up, there will be prompts guiding you on how to use it, but we will skip through those. And here we go. So connect your TelloEDU via Wi-Fi or your standard Tello via Wi-Fi and you can control your Tello. Again, you can move, you can control your Tello through this menu. At the top right, you can see if you've got a Wi-Fi connection and check your connection status. In the middle, you have your battery indicator, which will show you how much battery is in your Tello. You can fly your drone manually with the hand controls or switch to gyroscopic controls with this button here. To switch back, you can also tap that button and switch back. When in mode 2, which is the default, the left hand control is your left and right and up and down, as you can see here. The right hand side is forward, left, right and back motion. These buttons when pressed will flip the drone in said direction, forward, right, left and back. And you can also set a speed lock if you wish to travel at a certain speed. By pressing the camera button, you will be able to see what the drone sees and take photos with the button in the top right corner. You can also switch the video button with the button next to that one. You can press the takeoff button here to take off when your drone is connected. Exiting back out of this menu with the back button, we can press return and return to the main menu. The second menu on the left, the game piece, allows you to program the drone. If we tap into this menu, we can see the menu screen here. On the left hand side, you have your tiles you can select through, motion, control, variables, operating and sensing. But again, we will talk more about programming later on. You can also save your code with the bottom left button by tapping that one. Or you can download previously saved code with the button next to that one, which is the red one. By tapping the I in the bottom left corner, you'll launch up a virtual simulator where you can test out your code before you, put, so before you use it on your real drone to make sure it doesn't crash. You can also come to the bottom corner here and tap the drone in orange and that will set some levels and challenges up for you to attempt in the simulator. But we can press back and exit out of this menu. On the right hand side, you can use the camera button to take photos. And you can see your flight data on the right hand side too. There's also a battery indicator at the top. And when you're ready, press tap to start and that will run your code. Again though, we're going to exit out of this menu and return to the home menu. So press back and return. On this home menu, the last icon is the swarm icon. This allows you to use the swarm features as well as program mission pads. We will not be covering that in this course, but you're welcome to experiment with it if you wish. You will need multiple drones to use the swarm feature, or you can use mission pads. Again though, exiting back out of this, 
Another menu is the class menu, which is on the top left. If you are enrolled in a class, by selecting this menu, it will give you class information. There is also at the top your personal learning personal learning menu, which is next to the uh, avatar menu. And in here, you can see what levels you've completed and how effectively you've completed them. Moving on, in the main menu here, you have your simulator. This is where you can attempt different challenges and attempt different planets. If you do wish to change any settings, the top right corner button here is where you can adjust your settings. You can change language, adjust the volume, or go into account settings and change your password, reset your email, or log out. Again though, back to the main menu. We can start with the training station. This is where we'll teach you the basics of how to use a simulator. Each level will walk you through it, and it's relatively simple. But for the first couple, I'll just show you how you can do it. So launching 01 warp at the beginning, we can open it up and tap through the prompts. You can listen to the prompts if you are confused, or if you want to replay them in the top right button with the book. By tapping that, it will give you a description of the planet. Again, for the training missions, it will highlight which buttons you need to select to help guide you through it. So as you can see, we had the motion being highlighted, and the prompt comes back up. We can read the prompt, carry on. So we're going to drag the takeoff block and place it under tap to start. This will allow us to take off. We can then go back to motion and drag the forward block and place it under takeoff. By doing so, we will take off and then fly the drone forward one block. The goal of each level is to get through the exit portal, and as you can see here, this code will take us through the exit portal. You can run your code by pressing tap to start. On completing each level, you will get a successful message or a failure message. You will also get a star, me star menu, but that only occurs after the training station. If we move on to level two of the training station and open that up, again, you're welcome to read through the prompts, but we'll tap them through for this, for this lesson. As you can see now, forward one tile is highlighted. By tapping the one in forward one tile, we will open a menu prompt. In this menu, you can enter numbers, and that will be how many times the drone flies forward. So if we change that to two, you can see, again, tapping through the prompts, the drone will now fly forward two squares, and that corresponds with the exit portal. So we press tap to start, and our drone will fly through the exit portal, nice and easy. Again, we can carry on. To level three of the training station. Once it loads up, again tapping through the prompts, you'll now see there is a wall in our way. We need to travel around the wall. To do so, we can go to our motion menu and first drag take off. This will allow our drone to take off. We can go back and drag our left block under and that will move our drone one block to the left as you can see up here. We can then carry on and drag a forward block but as you can see because the exit portal is forward one, two blocks, we need to change that number. Tapping the one will allow us to change that to a two, and that will mean we're going to fly forward two tiles. We can then go to our motion and drag a right tile. As you can see, it doesn't matter which direction we're facing, as long as we get through the exit portal without crashing, we will, get the, we will win the planet. So as you can see, we can go through it sideways, forward, left, backwards, it does not matter. You can even go through it up or down. Again, carrying on to level four, Tapping through the prompts, we will now introduce the up block. So as you can see, the pool is above us. We can go and drag the takeoff block. On every level, you will need the takeoff block, so you can always start there if, you want it, if you're struggling. We can then drag the up block from our menu, and that will make us fly up one tile. So up one tile, nice and easy. We can press tap to start. As you can see, we fly through the exit portal. Carrying on, level five we're going to reach the terminal block. This level, it makes it a bit challenging, more challenging, and we've got to do it on our own without the flashing prompts. So, as you can see, first up, we will need a takeoff, because every level you do need a takeoff. If we tap the camera button with the movement on the right-hand side, this guy here, it will allow us to move our camera position, so we can rotate to get a better view of the map. We can also use the hand to move left and right, although that's not necessary for this level. Press the back button, it will take us back to the coding menu. As you can see here, we need to move up to get to the portal height. We also need to move left and forward and then right through the portal. The order you do this in doesn't really matter. So for this one, we're going to go up first. If we count how many times you need to go up, it's one, two. 
So we can change the up to two tiles. And then you will notice if we rotate the screen, we need to move left one tile. So we can drag out our left one tile. If you're ever confused, you can run your code to see what's happening. So as you notice here, we end up to the left here. So we'll retry that one. We now, we know we have located right here in the square here. So what we need to do is move forward one, two tiles. And that will get us in line with the exit portal. So we can come down here and drag our forward two tiles. And that's going to get us in line with the exit portal. If we test this and see what happens, you notice we'll end up right here, which is exactly where we want to be. Again, now we're one portal away from the exit portal. All we need to do is use our right tile, fly right one block, and that will take us through the exit portal. Nice and easy. As you can see, we get through the exit portal. Moving on to level six. Again, we can tap through the prompts. This time we have a landing pad. Now landing pads are needed to activate the exit portal. So upon landing on the landing pad and taking back off again, the exit portal will light up and we'll be able to fly out of the map. So as you can see, we already have the takeoff and forward two tiles blocks in play. We can go to motion and drag the highlighted land block. And drag that in there. And then again, we can use a takeoff block. And as you can notice, if we land and take off, we'll be flying again. So then we can use the forward block to take us through the exit. Again though, you'll notice the forward, we need to go one, two blocks forward. So we can change that one tile to a two tiles. Press tap to start and we can watch our code run. As you see, when we land on the landing pad, the exit portal opens up. Again, we can carry on to level seven. Tapping through the prompts, as you can see, there is now a monster in our path. To clear it, we need to use the lightning gun. Now the lightning gun works, first you need to pick it up and then you can shoot it. The lightning gun shoots in the direction you're facing. So if we are facing side on, the lightning gun will shoot this way. If we're facing forward, the lightning gun will shoot forward. So we need to be mindful of our orientation in order to make the lightning gun shoot in the correct direction. Additionally, to pick the lightning gun up, you need to be flying directly over it on the same height. So if the lightning gun was this little robot here, we need to be flying directly over it at the same height. So if we're on ground level, we need to be flying directly over at ground level in the first grid to pick it up. So if we use our motion, we can equip the blaze gun and then we can use the fire blaze gun which will clear the path from the monster. We can then use our forward and fly it through the exit. But for now we'll just give this a test, see what happens, we pick it up, we shoot the monster and the pathway is clear. So we can retry and now you'll see we need to get through to the end of this map. Once picking up the gun we are one, two, three, four, five blocks away so we can go if you notice from the start, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, but we've moved to the right one. So we only have to go forward five. We can drag our forward down there, press five, and press tap to start. As you can see, we pick up the gun and then fly it through the exit. Nice and simply. Moving on to level eight. Tapping through the prompts again. Okie doke. So this time, guys. As you can see, we need to use a motion block and throw away to get rid of the lightning gun. This allows us to drop the lightning gun on the monster. So if we move the screen and we zoom out a bit, you can zoom out with your fingers by doing a scroll out motion. As you can see, we start off from the top. The code that is already in place takes us off and flies us forward one and picks up the gun forward one. By throwing away, we're dropping it on the monster, which is clearing our path. So you cannot shoot downwards or upwards with the blaze gun, but if you throw it away, you can drop it directly down. So now you'll see we are directly over the exit portal, but we're not in the right height. So if we have a look here, we need to go down one, two, and three blocks, and that will take us through the exit. So we can use that down. Again, drag it up underneath the start block. If you tap anywhere on the screen but the actual code, you'll move the code around. If you cap any of the code, you can take it off. So if you want to take down off, we can take down off. You can also delete it with the delete bin on the left hand side by dragging it to your left. Right, like so. We can go back though and drag back out our down code 
And again, like we said before, one, two, three down. So we change that to a three, press tap to start, and we can watch our drone fly through the map. Perfect. Again, start your challenge. We'll move on to the last level of the training station. So this time, if we have a look what's happening, it's highlighting the right yaw. So what the yaw is going to do is it's going to turn our craft left and right. So one advantage of drones is they're able to move in any direction. However, sometimes you want to be facing the right direction, like when you're using the blaze gun. So we can use the left yaw or the right yaw, and that will turn our craft 90 degrees to the right or 90 degrees to the left. So forward, left yaw, right yaw. So if you were to go left yaw and then right yaw, you'd be back to where you started. So they cancel each other out. As you can see, we've dragged the right yaw in. Then it's saying drag the fire in. So we can drag the fire in and drag the forward in and drag the left jaw in. So like the prompts say, and as we have a look around and see what's happening on the map now, we can see what's happening. So we're taking off, we're flying forward one tile. Once we're forward one tile, we're picking up the gun. We're then jawing right and firing once, which will clear that monster. Then after we've done that, we are going forward one tile and left jaw so what's happening if we run this code and see what happens if we tap run we can have a look it doesn't work that's because there's a second monster there so we actually need to use another fire so if we move around to the point where we can actually see what's happening we can walk through our code so again always test your code as you go so you know what's happening so we've killed the first monster and we've gone forward and turned left now we need a fire to clear the second monster and then fly through the exit portal. So we can grab our forward, we need to go forward one, two, one, two. so we can change that to a two, and then if we run this code, we can watch it and it will clear our path. Perfect. So that right there is the entire training station. Moving on to the earth, we won't go through step-by-step -step tutorials on each level. You can find that afterwards, but we will provide some hints if you are struggling with any levels.